an interesting reading of this particular report. Uh, I do have just, don't want to debate the question, but I just want to get an understanding as to where uh, staff is coming from uh, on this. In the background on the first page, you talk the inflation rate of 2013 uh, being between 1.3 and 1.5 percent. From um, my analysis and research, I gathered that right up to uh, end of September, where in the Canadian uh, analysis uh, for ca across Canada, why I should say it's less than one percent, it's 0.94 percent, and then for Ontario, it's just a shade over uh, at 1.01 uh, percent. So. I'm just wondering whether your estimation of 1.3 to 1.5 is, is higher, or what, what's your uh, background or reason for it? Mr. Hagee? Through you, Mr. Chair, uh, the 1.3 and 1.5 percent come from the provincial budget and the federal budget. So that's, that's their projections. When they were setting their budgets in March, their projection for inflation, one was 1.3 percent, one was 1.5 percent. Uh, but as uh, Councillor Uneski mentioned the year to date for Ontario, which is the number that we use when we're talking about inflation, is uh, just over 1% to date. And to be, to be clarify as well, this wouldn't be updated because this is simply a reprinting of the motion that we passed at the last variance or the last budget discussion. So they wouldn't, they wouldn't, they can't change the motion. So oh, okay. I, I, I see your point. Okay, okay I, I overlooked that. Thank you. Um, 4.5. And 4-13 uh, are just sort of the pages that introduce the uh, strategic initiative issue paper as well as the alternative revenue issue paper. And you got four in the uh, first category, the strategic initiative, and you note on the right-hand column, included in the proposed budget, in each of those you say no. And then in the alternative revenue issue, the same thing, you've got seven items, and then included in the proposed budget, you say no. And I'm trying to understand, it's not going to be included, yet when I look and read each um, issue paper, there's a recommendation or a budget impact that says hire so many people or uh, so much revenue is expected. Is, is it going to be included or not included? I'm just, I'm totally confused. So I can speak to that, Mr. Chair. These are options for Council to consider and deliberate on. They will not be included in the submission that we bring forward to you. Should you see fit to approve any of the new user fees, that will reduce the tax levy by up to a quarter of a percent. And should you see fit to approve any of the new additions, those would be added cost to budget. But our recommendation would be that you use additional assessment growth to fund those so that it doesn't impact the overall target. So we will be reviewing these come the budget time with Correct. recommendations based on these issue papers? That's right. The operating budget comes forward um, the, f the second week of December. Yeah. This will certainly be a major focal point and at that point we hope to share with you the early findings from our consultation, so the citizen input that we're receiving around these options. Okay. Um, well, if it's based on that scenario, what you've just explained, um, I, I really don't have any further questions on that, just, just have a concern on it. Uh, in terms of where staff is coming from, but I can understand where staff is coming from. And just also, I have a, uh, a message from uh, Councillor Fernandez that uh, she is also concerned about uh, some of these uh, comments and the issue papers as well that I'm passing on. Thank you. Councillor Rubenovich. Thank you. <clears throat> just have a couple questions on the um, special event, uh, one that's listed in here. And specifically, there. Um, have, have we considered what the impact will be in, in recommending this? Uh, specifically, most of the events that are listed where we start talking about the chargebacks like Kitchener Blues, um, Oktoberfest, Link Picnic, um, most of those organizations get grants from us for the city chargebacks. So are we, or, or for a good chunk of the city chargebacks. So are we not simply going to see a situation where uh, their grant increase is going to, their, their grant request is going to increase and therefore potentially if, if we give it to them, net out the, the impact? Mr. Wilmer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, that is one of the risks that we've identified. Um, so we, we don't know that that will be the case, um, but we have identified it as one of the risks. 
And in terms of um, these costs, do, um, do folks have the option of using city services or external services for some of these things? Um, uh, I'll look to operations to, to clarify. Uh, this is for, um, for cleanups, I think, and, and other works to support special events. Through you, Mr. Chair, Excuse if me. the service is provided, um, I'll use um, Ribfest as an example, where the, um, the operator was responsible for doing all of the um, sanitation, garbage collection within the con confines of that space. Um, because of the success of the operation, um, it spilled out up Gockle Street, King Street, and into the park. And so there is an additional expense associated with that. And what we've been trying to do is address the fact that in order to uh, give a good s level of service to all our constituents, <coughs> there's those types of impacts that do affect us. So that's an example where a success, they've picked up some costs, but we have our own staff that are necessary to um, take the garbage out of our uh, containers that are on our city infrastructure, which is not then an option available to the, the operator. Okay, and the last question I have is, I mean, the reason we have um, special events, or a big reason, is to um, create uh, civic pride, to encourage people to come to the downtown and so on. If we start increasing, like, in, in, in putting this idea forward, have staff considered the implications on viability of these events? And that we we may actually be hurting ourselves more than. Councilor Benovich, I think us. you're you're treading into debate. I don't want to go there. Okay, please. But I, I, I just want to understand if staff looked at that in terms of how that balances against our economic development priorities. I'm not going to debate it. Yeah, I I think the question is internally debated, and I don't want to get into that for the purpose of the remainder of the questions as well. So I. I, I don't, I'm not going to permit any sort of questions of that nature at this time. Okay, I'll ask the question afterwards then. Thank you. Councillor Singh. Yes, thank you. Um, so seeing this report, some you know, good ideas and some not so much. But uh, as for some unfunded items on page 4-84, and this question would be relevant for both 4-8 and 4-11. So, so the two are improved customer service efficiency through mobile technology and through in improved infrastructure data management to better support spending decisions. Both I see that you know, we're, we're improving efficiencies and better management with our, with our citizens and our customers as well, in which case it would evolve into better efficiencies within the corporation. So a report like this, uh, and this is more of a suggestion, further reports that will come that will speak to the merit of this, uh, this recommendation also speaking to what those efficiencies may drive, be derived from and the cost saving that could, that could be generated through the corporation, especially more in improved uh, infrastructure data management. So my question is, is my, assertion, is my assumption correct that efficiencies can be derived and there would be a cost saving as well, although there's a cost for you know, uh, additional staffing? So what I would suggest, Mr. Chair, is that you'll be receiving a, a detailed presentation on asset management next Monday and on November the 18th on mobile technology and customer service. So perhaps we can take that question back and seek to address it through both of those detailed presentations. Good, that would be helpful, especially because I won't be here next meeting, but uh, as long as that's addressed, that would be helpful, helpful for us to council, I'm sure, as well. Um, as for the uh, suggestions for, um, for some savings as uh, a policy that, uh, or the, the motion that council had uh, passed, uh, similar comments to Councillor Bravanovich, where um, additional fees charged for special events, um, I could see that uh, would only, you know, uh, regress some of the, uh, you know, the uh, the benefits that we try to derive from, uh, you know, engage, you know, encouraging more activity in the downtown core and throughout the whole city for civic pride. So that's something I'm not so sure of. Um, and the later part is for. Uh, increased advertising revenue through sponsorship. So 4-17, um, staff have outlined that uh, revenues could be generated by 45,000. So 15,000 is, is assumed through advertising in municipal owned operated websites, facility signage, and advertisement on city fleets. I'm not sure about the last one, but um, the reports that will be coming, are we going to capture some of the fund, some of the revenues 
can, that can be generated through that, or is it just too early uh, at the infancy of uh, our new uh, sponsorship strategy to capture those revenues? Uh, Councilor Singh, sir, you're on page 417? 417, 418, actually. For okay, that's, that's yeah. what we can uh, Mr. May. Through you, Mr. Chair, uh, two points. First of all, uh, staff will be bringing a detailed report in sponsorship strategy to uh, committee on December 2nd, at which time uh, uh, you'll get some additional detail in terms of the background for this issue paper. What I would say is that uh, if we are going to proceed, if council should choose to uh, uh, approve this particular issue paper and inclusion in budget, uh, staff would proceed to develop an RFP and go out and recruit an outside company that would do these sales. We're quite a ways away from full, fully knowing what our inventory is. So at a high level, we know that we could increase advertising in our parking garages. But we don't know where they could go, how big they could be, how much money we could generate from them. And that's part of the work that we would uh, have that outside company do. So at this point, these are high-level estimates that we feel comfortable recommending to Council, but the specific details aren't known yet. Okay, that's good. And a lot of this will require some policy changes as well. Correct? Absolutely. What, uh, what you'll see on December 2nd is the start of some of those policy changes, and then our, uh, our hope would be that in the first quarter of next year, we'll bring back a very concrete sponsorship and advertising strategy that will work out a lot of the details. Okay. And this is this really complete, or is this still... Uh, I'm, I'm t speaking of discussion within staff uh, or our uh, management leadership team to address and see if th there can be some other savings as well, or is this what's before us? This is the final. Th this is uh, this is what we feel comfortable proposing for the 2014 budget at this time. Again, you'll see on December 2nd a, a path that we believe is a responsible approach to sponsorship that. Over, over several years could ramp up funding, but this is a component we felt comfortable could go early because we would outsource it and generate these funds. Great, thank you so much. Councillor Etherington. Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair, again on page 414, the special events. I don't intend to debate that. I certainly hope to when it comes back to us. But I just wanted to say that that 5,000 additional cost recovery, in my opinion, is way low. I agree with what Councillor Vabanovic was saying about these kind of special events that benefit the city. But there are several take place in my ward which are in the park, which are uh, profit-making ventures. And I think the damage done to the park, I think we're way under with what we charge back to those people. Um, as an example, we're just in the midst of putting in an irrigation system in the park, which I believe is going to cost about seventy or 80000 That is partially for the benefit of those uh, special events, and I think we should be charging back some of the money toward those kind of costs. And for a number of years, I think we've undercharged on profit-making ventures in the park. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ines. Was there a question? There was no question. It was a comment, but that's okay. <laughs> Councillor, thank you, through you, Chair Davey. Uh, Councillor Singh touched upon one of the questions that I wanted to uh, address was which the cost benefit to the strategic initiative papers that are that. What are the benefits to it? I think is important to uh, put in there because, realistically, we, we as council may not have the desire to implement all of these uh, strategic initiatives, and I think it's important that's in there. But my other question kind of ties into the strategic plan in the sense: Are any of these items will be addressed within that strategic plan? Because obviously, these are some big issues that I think that we need to be looking at and move forward with eventually. Mr. Wilmot? Through the chair, it's, it's hard to generalize because some of them are already uh, addressed in either general or specific terms, and, but, but more particularly because the next version of the strategic plan is a work in progress. There really, there's a lot of work to be done between now and early 2015 when the new strategic plan would be before council after the election. So uh, Bottom line really is that in general terms, they are addressed, but in terms of the specifics, that is something that is a work in progress. Okay. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, I just have one question on uh, the uh, additional user fees on page 4-20. Uh, first question is, I, I assume that if council were inclined to, instead of increase at 1%, if they increased half a percent, um, actually, I, should, I guess that's the question, would both numbers scale? Like, basically, would the... Um, would the leisure access card, I guess that's the part I'm most concerned about. If, so if we were to increase a half a percent, would that need necessarily go down to 5,000 instead of 10, or is that more of a budget correction? It's not so much a budget correction as I think a recognition that over time we cannot rely as much on external funders to make up our budget, and therefore within the next three to four years we're recommending that we get to the required level of funding. So I think our advice to Council would be that that program needs to stand on its own feet regardless <coughs> and that you should separate the two deal with an appropriate fee increase and deal with leisure access cards separately. You could still prorate it, um, but they are distinct considerations. Okay. So if, again, then, so to clarify, uh, so that 10000 will stay the same even um, as a recommendation, even if we were to reduce the increase to half a percent. So it, we just divide the uh, 115 and a half as a, and leave the 10. It would be to divide the 125 and a half and leave the 10. So the 10 is yes. net against. Okay. Very good. Uh, I have no, f oh, Councillor Singh, do you have another question? I do, and thank you, Mr. Chair. If you could allow me, I missed this. Uh, on 4-12, uh, for proactive street tree maintenance. And uh, perhaps Ms. Houston or Mr. Whitmer can uh, address this. Uh, this is to do with, obviously, uh, I, I think this is partly uh, what we ask for, efficiency uh, of you know, doing street, uh, tree stumping right after tree removal as well. But as part of that initiative, uh, the, uh, the report outlines that there would be uh, a requirement of additional two FTE staff uh, and as well as require a chipper truck. So my question was, do we, do we not already have a chipper truck or it just means we need another one? Mr. Weber. Through you, Mr. Chair, it would mean additional. We have several already. So why can't it be the same work be done? Obviously, we do stump. It's not that we don't do something right now within you know, our uh, internal operations. So if you have the equipment, if you have the know-how with the staff, why not correlate that same thing you know, when you were at the job site, when we were take, removing the tree, can't the same staff do the stumping thereafter and use the same equipment that we already do have? Well, well. Um, that's, a, that's a stump grinder, not a chipper. Okay. The, the chipper is for the branches, the, the limbs, um, stems that are as a result of the tree. The, the stump is a grinding machine. Uh, to take the stump out, you have a different grinding machine that doesn't come along with the crew. Um, we do have that. We do have crew that do know how to do that. So the, 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 the question was the same crew that remove the tree uh, or do the tree maintenance or you know, pruning and, and such, do they not have the know-how or the, I guess, the qualifications uh, to be able to do the stumping as well if the appropriate equipment there, was there along with the tree removal equipment? Yes, they do have the, the know-how. It's a matter of efficiency. It, um, as in the private sector, you don't always have the same crews do the same activity because of the, the speed in which they move along. They cut them down and move on. The stump's there. They come back, and another crew deals with the grinding and then the cleanup. Um, we've, been, we've investigated other, other companies, and that's the way they, they perform the activity as well. So we're just modeling what the industry does as uh, most cost-effective. Um, obviously, this, is, this was a very unexpected cause to, to the city, uh, especially for mediation from you know, EAB effects. Um, do we not have a way of trying both, seeing, doing it internally within the existing staff and the equipment that we have? And if uh, you know, our assumptions are correct that obviously it's not, it's not the best management of our staff's time or the best efficiencies are, are, are garnered from it, then obviously go with the industry standard as you've outlined. Do we not have the ability uh, to do it? Councilor Singh, we're sort of going off the track of even it was within the I'm issue. I'm not paper. speaking to the merits of the, the report, uh, Mr. Chair. I'm asking a question of, you know, they've, they've outlined this suggestion, and I'm just looking at it if a different approach was considered as well. That's all. Mr. Whitmer. Through you, Mr. Chair. We can take a look at it. Um, given the body of work that is required to actually remove ash trees um, and the volume that we're dealing with, um, we're trying to stay on top of that as much as possible. So we'll take a look at the impact to see whether or not it actually makes sense for us to do that. Uh, if it does, we will. If it doesn't, then uh, we won't. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I have no further questions. Uh, so I would, if I'm looking for someone to move the recommendation, uh, just a reminder that um, 
staff can work out the wording, but essentially the recommendation would be as is, except for uh, issue AR05 would be referred to the November 18th meeting where we discuss uh, user fees. Uh, moved by Councillor Rabanovich. Those in, oh, sorry, Councillor Hennessy. Have... Okay. Uh, those in favor and opposed, that's carried unanimously. Uh, that concludes the discussion items. Uh, unless there are any questions on the un unfinished business, I think we are adjourned. And Councillor Nidus, we will be starting um, community services at 1 p.m., I believe. Okay, thank you. <laughs>